Hello and welcome to Revealing Your Secrets, the podcast. Today we are here with Erin Gilfoy and Carly and Contro. Hello. <gasps> Hi. Hello. Hi. Wow. <laughs> I'm excited to have you guys here. I have a confession. Oh, okay. Also, I'm moving too quickly. A secret already. Got, I, yeah. I actually do have a secret. <laughs> you guys may recognize Carly and Aaron from Carly and Aaron on YouTube. The Vlog Squad started out on Vine. Yes. Only Friends podcast. Yes. Good Ma'am. Influences podcast. Oh yes. Ma'am. Or whole Lots discography. of stuff. <laughs> so I had an ulterior motive to <gasps> inviting you here today. Oh. I have seen you guys from afar. For a while, and <laughs> this is like kind of creepy, and just thought we would be friends. Yeah. Oh, so yes. I just, that's, and it's two birds, one stone, because obviously if we're going to be good friends, we'll make good content. But that's like the real reason you're here. Oh well, God. I love that. Should we just stop the podcast and hang out? <laughs> Let's just go. <laughs> I feel like we have also had this conversation yeah. in the past. Stop like, it, we, I mean, we watched your bits. Me. Even um, when I was leaving to come today he was like wait who are you filming with and I was like Alex Weiss remember we would watch her videos where she would pretend to be an Uber driver and <laughs> yeah. like prank feel he's like oh yeah she's so funny when you say so you she- were talking that was your husband you were talking yes. to it's so weird that you have a husband I know it's <laughs> saying it I feel so pretentious my husband my husband my, uh, my hubs we're just at an odd age where like it makes sense but it's also like husband Husband? Like, yeah. yeah. Like, are you sure about that? But like, that? we're fully 31. Are you yeah. sure though? Like, you did it and you're sure about it? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I also have one other thing to share since we're friends now. Okay. Yeah, it seems like you guys wanted that too. Yeah, okay, of course. Good. Um, this has nothing to do with you, but it's something that <laughs> happened that. to me yesterday and I just want to talk about it. Okay. okay. I escaped a cult yesterday. <gasps> A cult? A cult. Which one? In LA? I don't... Well, first off, I'm not sure the name of it. Um, The information I do have, I, I'm like nervous to even say it. Oh my God. <gasps> okay. Wait, tea. So I I went on Meetup um, to find a group to meditate with because I've been oh, med- okay. meditating a lot lately, doing yoga. I would love like a spiritual community. Uh-oh. This is definitely it. going in the direction of a cult. Of a cult, yeah. <laughs> so I um, signed up for this meditation. I go to somewhere in Pasadena that's like in the middle of nowhere. Oh it's um, this like non secular religious um compound like it's literally a compound you know there are buildings it's like in nature whatever i noticed the second i drive onto the property my music stops playing on my phone and i look at my phone and i have no service yeah girl turn around but i didn't no i I always like you know you have to know i knew but but do you ever just kind of yeah. You just want to explore like, well, a little bit. And I made it all the way. I drove a while yeah. to get there. It was like a 40 minute drive. Anyways. So um, there weren't any lights. There was barely anyone there. I keep driving and driving. This it's is at a big night? Place. Yeah. This was <gasps> at night last night. It was like 8 p.m. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and I finally come up to this building that has lights on it. So I'm like, okay, this is probably the place I need to be. But I noticed that there's only one car parked there, which is also kind of sus. There's like no one here. I, I know I shouldn't get out of my car, but I do. <laughs> Love this. And I start walking up and I'm looking around. And as I get further to the building with lights, I notice that there's a building behind it with more lights and it's like a proper church. And um, <laughs> I'm like a pretty spiritual person, but sometimes religious stuff freaks me out a little bit. Sure. You know, religion and like control and power. There's been too many it's, documentaries. Yeah. 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 So, and there's like writing on the wall and I start reading the like old ye English writing and it's just like whatever it says is rubbing me the wrong way and there's nobody there and so I'm just like kind of taking in the area and I get jump scared by this woman who's standing like 20 feet away from me dead still like for a second I thought maybe she was um like a statue wearing (laughs) human clothes so I like I really I can't tell you how much that scared me so (laughs) so I waved to her (laughs) <laughs> I was like, I wanted to see if she was a person. Hi. And she waved Hi. back. Yeah, she waved back. And then I was just, I said, are you here for the meditation? <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't speak a word. No. What? She didn't say a word. She just went like this. <gasps> ah! She motioned Did me Did she over. make any facial expressions? Well, so she, this is the, after she motioned me over and I, I'm clocking like, this is weird. She's not speaking. I notice what she's wearing. <laughs> oh, no. Uh-oh. And what like is she wearing? Full midsummer. Well, she's wearing like, she's wearing a coat and stuff. So that's not, the clothes itself aren't weird, but she's wearing a weird hat. Oh. And there's nothing that says cult, like a weird yeah. accessory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes. And it's kind of like a white, like pointy hat, like oh, kind of oh, giving KKK like huh? adjacent. I, adjacent. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, oh, and I can't see her face because she's like wearing a thing on her face too. And it's all white. Um, <laughs> you were just on a KKK. 
Canceled. Meditation <laughs> retreat. Hope this doesn't get out. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no one can see me here. It wasn't like a full oh, on no. hat, you know? Yeah. But it was like, it was like a 30% that hat. <laughs> anyway, really what? weird. So I went like this to her. I motioned like, oh, one second. Like, I'm just going to go get something for my car. And then I sprinted to my car. And Whoa. I, and I left. And I'm really proud of myself for leaving because there's a version of myself that would have been like. <laughs> oh, when, wait. When you got home, did you Google and yeah, try to research? Oh, okay. There's more to this. Oh, okay. I tried to do research I didn't find much but there is more to this which is um so I actually signed up for an event of theirs like two events of theirs last week but I could, pre this pre this okay but I couldn't go because I got sick I had COVID oh my god and a guy who runs the group and you can see that on meetup which I've never really used before so I didn't realize you can like message people on meetup but he messaged me and he was really complimentary he was like wow really impressive how like you're a go-getter signing up for all this stuff and I was like yeah sure whatever <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like and I was like but I couldn't come because I, I was sick and I didn't want to get anyone sick and he was like and you have a big heart he was like being really complimentary and then he was like you should come to our potluck next week oh. Uh-oh. Anyways, so yesterday I was listening to We Can Do Hard Things with Glennon Doyle and Sarah Edmondson, who escaped the Nexium cult, oh my God. was on the podcast and she made a joke. I was listening to this yesterday morning before I had this experience. She made a joke. She said, if anyone ever like love bombs you, they're being really nice and then they invite you to their potluck. Uh-huh. She said potluck. It's Verbatim. a Verbatim. Yeah, it's oh, a my, Have so, you read um, Cultish by chance? No. Great book. It's, I might need to do some research. I think you should read it before you go back on Meetup. <laughs> oh, I was actually that thinking scary. of going to the potluck. No. <laughs> well, like, if you do, bring a GoPro. Yeah, you guys like, get a hidden camera, document the whole experience, and then if you don't make it out, at least we'll have the footage. Or, I mean, will you have the footage? That's a good yeah, point. Everything goes to the cloud. That's true. Yeah, I should, I'll live stream it. Yeah. But oh. I really will be going. I'm going to the potluck. You're going. Are you going to bring a friend? Um, you should like security. hire. Yeah, I should like, bring a friend. Hire like someone on Meetup. Do you, or you don't whatever. think I have friends? <laughs> Why are you no, me no, no, I mean like a big, <laughs> strong person who can protect you. <laughs> hire a security guard. I'd go with you, but I know that like I would get fully brainwashed. That's, oh yeah, I'm a little. I'd nervous like you guys about are right too. What are you going to bring to eat? I know. I guess I have to. <laughs> it's a vegan potluck, so I don't know. I'll make a little what? something. What you day is d- this? I need to. Know. I need to hear it's updates. It's next Saturday. Next Saturday. Okay. Well, you're gonna have to text us. I will tell you. I because you know what the thing is. Like, <laughs> you can call it s- stupidity. Sure. It's curiosity. It's curiosity. Yeah. I, get I it. have to know if it's a call. You know what curiosity did? Kills the cat. It did. <laughs> <laughs> no, not the cat. <laughs> not the cat. <laughs> not the cat. <laughs> oh. Well, I hope um, you survive. Truly. Well, actually, I do. I'm realizing I said this had nothing to do with you guys, but I think maybe you two know a little bit more about cults than, um, than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Not because you read cultish. Well, a lot of people liken the vlog squad oh. to a cult. Ooh. Have oh, you heard that yeah. before? Oh, of course. What do you mean, have we heard that before? <laughs> I was literally making it because we did. We went to an emo night recent. Well, not recently, but like the first one back after the pandemic. And it was literally cult themed. Yeah. So we got like. It was like Midsommar. Midsommar. Yeah. yeah. So and I was like, fun. joined another cult. Like, it's just like so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> but it's true. I feel like we can talk about it now. Yeah. We took a blood sworn oath. The NDA has worn off. <laughs> I don't know. We'll release the footage. I am so gullible for a second. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> really? She's like, we just lie the whole time. Finally. What do you think, though, like when people say that? Um, I think it was just started by, I, I don't know. I feel like when something people attach themselves to an idea and run with it, everyone believes it. And but also that's like so ridiculous. Too. Yeah, I'm like, what yeah. do you think we were doing? <laughs> yeah. Like, like having fire. I don't yeah. know. Or blood. I don't know the definition of a cult, actually. I'm not going to lie. But there is a power. Were you about to go grab your phone? Yeah. But then it, I was like, that power, might be rude. <laughs> there's a power dynamic. No. Like, that's part of what a cult is. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I didn't feel that way, really. Me neither. It was just like <laughs> fun. LOL fun. <laughs> yes. But that's I'm also I like, too. yeah. We were also like always fine with saying no to things and not And it wasn't guilt. like, well, it was yeah. like, okay. I see. Okay. It's like. Also, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to push you to say it was a call. I'm just no, I'm <laughs> curious. No, we joke You're about literally it. fine. Yeah. <laughs> cool. You just wear us down the whole time. We're like, fine. It's a fucking call. <laughs> well, we did have to go to a potluck. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. 
Yeah, there was that hibachi night. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to cut out everything in between after <laughs> I make it edit it so that we did. <laughs> Fine, it was a cult. Yeah. <laughs> or it's just That's like, like the yes. trailer for the podcast. <laughs> was it a cult? It yet. <laughs> like edit it together. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I'm glad you guys are here, and it seems like we could be friends. Yeah, definitely. Well, it was funny because when I walked in, I was like, have we met yet in real life? Like, I don't know. I don't think. I don't think we've ever met it before. It feels like it. On the internet, it's hard. It's like, I know what you do a lot because you post mm-hmm. with everybody. And then if you've been to a YouTube convention, sometimes you don't know if you've met people or not because yeah. it's like a blur. Yeah. And everybody, it's like, what's the difference between, I don't know. It's. I think I actually have seen you guys at a convention, oh. but th- I didn't say hi. Why? Mm. She was um, worried because the cult. Yeah. yeah. She I was like, get I don't want to. Yeah. yeah. That's As you're going to a potluck next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was overstimulating. Uh, it's okay. Those, YouTube like, convention. Or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Too much. They're too much. I'm done. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Same. It was fun while it lasted, though. It was. When was the last time you went? Mm, I think maybe I was like 19 years old. Wait, how old are you now? Uh, how old am I? That's a good question. I'm 27. Oh, okay. okay. You guys oh, are older. Is that rude? <laughs> no, no. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are we are older? <laughs> well, honestly, I knew you were married, Aaron, so I looked yeah. up how old you were. Because, like, I, you're, like, you're like 24. Yeah. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, yeah. marriage is an interesting thing. So I was like, how old is this? I'm 31. Person? Well, no. For those anytime I hear someone has a child or is married, I'm just curious. No yes. judgment. I'm just like, okay, where's just this person in life? Yeah. yeah totally. Exactly. Curiosity. Um, so maybe we've met, maybe we haven't, but I'm glad we're here now. Same. Yeah. And I, we have a bunch of secrets to go through. I so love excited. secrets. I love drama. I love tea. Not for me. Yeah. Right. But it hearing about it, people's. it's yep. the best we have. Not to like plug our Patreon, but we have a Patreon <laughs> that's like <laughs> patreon.com slash only friends, but it's like adjacent to our podcast. Okay. And um, we do episodes where people literally send in their like drama with their friends or family or whatever and we have to like help them in some sort of way so, so it's kind of fun. similar in a way but do you I like, talk to them no they just email but oh, a I lot see. of times we'll be like oh, can you update us and then they will yeah so we, we are talking that. to them just yeah. delayed yeah and it's successful one time I told a girl's mom that she was a bitch and I told her to play it for her mom and then now her and her mom are in therapy her mom cried a and they got therapy <laughs> wow yeah. Yeah. all right well hope you can bring those <laughs> chops out yeah. today and we can help people well, yeah Erin is saving lives these. yeah, yeah. <laughs> She doesn't mind at all. <laughs> From the East Coast. <laughs> okay. Your mom's a bitch. Yeah. I was like, well, <laughs> your mom's are all different. I don't know. <laughs> your mom's yeah. a fucking cunt. Yeah. <laughs> she was. Cunt to behavior. And now she knows. She and does. Now she knows when they're in therapy. And so that's the we, first step. We literally changed someone's life. Yeah. So that's beautiful. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we therapist can change owes us a today. check. You know? <laughs> Like at least a percentage. Yeah. Right. Wait, I have a question. Did yeah. you have a podcast with a th- your therapist? Oh my god, I did. Or okay, let's just talk about it. Okay, because I, well, I was like, or I saw a <laughs> trailer for it or something, and I was like, is this ethical? Okay, so um, this is actually really funny that you're asking me because I was just never going to talk about it. But oh, here well, we I'm go. so sorry. Address it. Were you in a cult? Yeah. With your therapist? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She made me do the podcast. I, um, she wasn't my, like, uh, t- my everyday therapist. Okay, that's but what I thought. years prior, I was in, like, a group therapy, and she was l- leading the group. Okay. okay. So, like, when you're in else. AA or something? Exactly. It's, it's for it. DBT. Not suggesting you were in No, AA. it's called DBT. <laughs> okay. It's, like, a specific type oh, of yeah, therapy. Oh, yeah, i heard of that. And you do a year of group therapy, and she was a group therapist. She was on the podcast, and... Ooh, I'm. Re- this is called revealing your secrets, so I should probably be honest. Oh, oh yeah, I'd love. I've loved this. As we filmed the show, there were a lot of episodes where there were moments where I felt like I had to cut it out because um, some of the commentary just felt like it wasn't on par with like what I believe in, and like um, felt a little unhinged, even maybe. Oh. Um, and then there was one episode where I just decided not to like hyper edit, um, and I put it up, and everyone was really upset, oh. and there was some like really kind oh, of no. dicey stuff around like gender and oh. um yeah I just p- people weren't happy with it and I just thought to myself that like it, it wasn't working and maybe we shouldn't have a show where there's just like one person that's the beacon of what is good you know what I mean like totally. to ha- this person is the therapist that's yeah. gonna give you advice like yeah nobody knows anything it's like a tiktok therapist it's like this is mm, some of this doesn't make sense but right yeah and and how are you to know like I don't, sometimes therapists I'm not speaking about this specific person 
But sometimes therapists like, <laughs> but, <laughs> but she specifically, <laughs> sometimes you wonder like, how do you know that you're equipped to be helping other people? Do you know what I mean? Totally. Oh, I see what you mean. It's like Dr. Phil. <laughs> yeah. Or like, who is that? There was one therapist on YouTube, but people always debated if she was like a oh, real her therapist. Name was Katie or something? Yes, I think oh. she is. She worked with Shane. Yeah. Yes. It's like, even if you are a real therapist though, sometimes it's like. I don't know. Have you done the work on your own shit? Like, you know, yeah. like how can you help people if you haven't? Also, usually in therapy, there's so much history that it's a lot easier to solve issues when you've had a lot of rapport. Right. And you know, you know, years and years of data. Versus, versus I, I mean, like doing like an off, like yeah. something like one-off this. Question. Yeah. 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 Which like, I think that's, a, I love the idea. Like I thought it was genius, but I was like, I asked my therapist, I was like, is this like ethical? Did you actually have a conversation well, I was just with curious, your therapist? I was like, not did. like I would want to do a podcast with my therapist, but I was like, is that <laughs> even like a thing people could do? And she's like, well, I wouldn't be able to. And I was like, okay, interesting. I want, she was like, but maybe she's like her life coach or something. Mm. Yeah. So I figured it was some sort of that different dynamic. That is so funny that you had a conversation with your therapist about this. Yeah. I had to bring up in therapy once. It was traumatizing. She did. That's so funny. Yeah. I feel honored that you talked about me yeah, with well, your therapist. <laughs> And then she came home to me and she was like, I asked my therapist. (laughs) (laughs) I hope I come up in many more sessions. Well, maybe maybe after today. What a fucked up thing to say. I hope you never Did you talk about me today? (laughs) Yeah. Therapy? Um, Okay. Let's get started. I feel like we could just, yeah. I know. I know. I know. (laughs) Forever. It's, It's tough out here. The holidays can be a stressful time. Airports, shopping malls, lots of people, some of which you're glad to only see once a year. Give yourself the ultimate gift of a stress-free holiday with Next Evo Naturals fast-absorbing CBD products. I find it very difficult to sleep when I fly home to the East Coast during the holidays, mostly because of the time difference. So I am definitely going to be bringing my Next Evo Sleep Support CBD gummies. I've been using them recently to help me fall asleep. It kicks in fast and it has saved me so many times now. Next Evo Smart Sorb technology delivers CBD to your system in as little as 10 minutes, unlike other CBD brands. Regular CBD only achieves 2 to 10% absorption, so over 90% of what you think you're getting goes to waste. Smart Sorb upgrades CBD's natural absorption power and is scientifically formulated to deliver more CBD fast. Next Evo is the only brand clinically proven to deliver 30 times better absorption in the first 30 minutes. So help fight holiday stress with Next Evo Naturals Stress CBD Complex Gummies featuring ashwagandha, clinically proven to reduce stress by 70%. Ashwagandha and CBD work together to target the source of rising stress hormones like cortisol. And Nexivo is the only brand that combines patented natural whole plant ashwagandha that's eight times more powerful than regular ashwagandha. And they're 100% U.S. hemp-derived smart sorb CBD with four times better absorption than standard CBD. Get smarter CBD from Nexivo Naturals and get up to 25% off subscription orders of $40 or more at nextevo.com slash podcast promo code secrets. That's N-E-X-T-E-V-O dot com slash podcast promo code secrets. With New Year's coming up, I'm sure many of us are thinking about all that we are hoping to accomplish in the coming year. For a little help, check out Masterclass, where you can learn from the world's best artists, icons, and leaders anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to think like an FBI profiler from John Douglas, improve your vocal skills from Mariah Carey, or learn the power of personal branding from Kris Jenner. With over 180 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is closer than you think. I am taking mindfulness and meditation with John Kabat-Zinn, and it's really been helping me to expand my understanding of meditation and my meditation practice. He said something in a class I watched recently about using meditation to liberate pain from suffering and therefore reduce suffering because we often make problems larger with our added emotional and cognitive components and then so meditation gives us the space to sit with the things that we instinctively want to ignore and suppress befriend them tend to them and then through that getting in touch with these things stop them from eroding the quality of our lives and it's so valuable to understand the value and purpose behind doing something in order to actually motivate you to do it so I thought this was a really great explanation I have a a lot going on in my life as many of us do so I appreciate flexible learning so it's easy to fit these 10 to 15 minute lessons into my everyday life. I highly recommend you check it out. This holiday, give the perfect gift of an annual masterclass membership and get one free. Go to masterclass.com slash Alex today. That's masterclass.com slash Alex, A-L-Y-X. Terms apply. You've got mail. Hi, Alex. So my secret is the worst thing I've ever done. I've managed to convince myself that what I didn't really isn't that bad because in order to stay sane, I had to. 
So I technically lost my virginity to a mini horse. When I was young, my family moved to a farm and my relative got me a mini horse, not a pony. There's a difference (laughs) because she loves animals and wanted an excuse to get one. This was when I was about eight. And although I loved the horse and was very grateful, I didn't ask for the responsibility. I cared for the horse. Let's call him Billy. As best I could as I grew into adulthood. Well, puberty hit me really hard and I became one of those horny teen boys that jerks it at least four times a day. (laughs) I discovered I was gay and living in the rural Midwest without any neighbors or siblings made me extremely lonely. I couldn't even have any intimacy at school because I couldn't find any other gays. This basically made me desperate and sexually frustrated to the point of crying weekly. I also have a scat fetish. What What is is that? that? Scat? Like, (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Brandon, can you check that out for us? I'm what you want me like, what a scat fetish? Yeah, Yeah, can you Google that? Yeah, I got you. The the condition is defined in the DSM 4 as a paraphilia sexual deviancy, sexual arousal, and pleasure from feces. Oh, (gasps) no. Oh, it's (laughs) not to shame you, but oh my (laughs) god. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay. I nope. wish it was what we thought we it was. This, yeah. For sure. That would be much better fetish. I'm OCD, and I think it just had to balance out somewhere. Well, basically, one time I was feeding Billy, and he took a fat shit, and it sent me <gasps> over the edge. I started playing with Billy's penis. That progressed to me fucking him with his residual shit while he ate. I'm so sorry, guys. He seemed <laughs> to be a bit annoyed, but he didn't fuss too much. Annoyed? So I don't think that he was in any pain. Horse anuses are a lot bigger. So anyway, the next day when I went to feed Billy, he pinned me to the wall with his butt like he wanted me to do it again. So I did. I hate to admit it. Not just pretty assuming that. Great, if not kind of dry. After that day, I took a long, hard look at myself and never did it again. This was all sometime in eighth grade, I think. I've moved states from university since, but the fact that I did it twice haunts me. I tell myself that I've watched Billy try to fuck literally everything that goes in his pen, so it's not like he has any concept of consent, and at the time, nobody taught me about consent either. I know that's shitty logic. (laughs) But I'm I'm just trying to not feed guilt about it forever. I'm not even into bestiality. I was just in a dark place, I think. I lost my human virginity to my fiance the summer after my junior year of high school. Anyway, love your show. I promise I'm not a shitty person. This is literally the worst thing I've ever done. I can't believe someone wrote this down to you. But, like, you can't believe that they admitted it? Sent yeah. It sent. Hit send. <laughs> yeah. Like, wrote it and sent. Wrote it and then was like, let's do it. Do you think the fiance knows? I, that's what I was also wondering. Well, okay, I'm curious... Is that illegal? <laughs> it's definitely it's not def- legal. Yeah. Oh, to okay. Fuck a horse. Yeah. Definitely. No, that's not. bestiality. Yeah. Or baby. Well, okay. He has so much awareness about it I after know. the fact. Yeah. Also, I just want to say really quickly. I agree. Getting someone a pet is a really bad gift. It's not a reason to fuck, fuck them. It, right? No, you should yeah. never fuck your pet, especially if someone <laughs> yeah. gets one for you. Definitely don't do that. It is only a bad, fuck it if you get it, it for yourself. Gift, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious. You both are in relationships. Yes. Yes. One of you is married. Erin. Um, if your partner came to you with the awareness that this person has, where they're literally like, I did something wrong. It haunts me. Um, uh-huh. But I just want you to know that actually my virginity I lost to a horse. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a lot. Would you would pursue were... the relationship? No. You would, pr- you would divorce your husband. Oh, uh, well, this far into it? I yes. mean, it's been like... Going on eight years. You, I feel like, though, you would at least be, like, thinking about it for a good three months. Oh, no, like, I literally... It would uh-huh. scar me. Yeah. But you would stay in the relationship. I would think that they were playing a long-term prank on me. <laughs> and like she would, it would be good to just believe that and just move on with life. Even if it is true. Better believe that it's a prank. Yeah. Yeah. And so much time has passed... Yeah. Since the fucking of the horse. Right. That you're already convincing yourself why you should stay <laughs> right. with your partner. And like you do weird things in middle school, you know, you're hitting puberty. I know. You're doing like, some like, sexual oh, but things. We have pets like. Oh, yeah. They got two pets. I don't know. Better watch out. I-, I hope he didn't tell his significant other. I love that they specified that they lost their human virginity. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, not I thank know. you for clarifying. <laughs> your fiance is not a mini pony. <laughs> yeah. I wonder which experience was better. Oh, T. Follow up. Could you imagine? He's like, well, because he's into the scat stuff. And, also, it would you know. just get so weird if that's like a kink of theirs where they're like, oh, I like fucking ponies or pets. And then they start like one night. They're like, hey, babe, like, let's role play. 
Mm. You're, you're, you're a, a mini pony. Horse. Well, that's why I feel like the secret is weirdly fine because it's not a fetish. He's just like, I fucked, fucked up. up. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, yes, fucked. Literally he literally fucked, fucked up. up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for submitting. It's horrifying. It was a hot, hot, <laughs> the hot start. This will haunt me forever. <laughs> steaming, steaming yeah. shitty start. <laughs> also, I love how we just glazed over the scat of it all. But he has a shit fetish. Yeah, he, he got very turned on when the <laughs> pony was pooping. I mean, like, to each their own, for I sure. I wonder if that still exists. What? The scat fetish. But he fetish. still has oh, a yeah. scat fetish. I feel like fetishes usually persist. Yeah. Actually, you know what's crazy? I had, I wouldn't say it's a fetish, but I would say, like, a sexual inclination. Ooh. And then I did, like, work. <laughs> I did the work. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's gone now. Oh. Wait, can you say what it was? Or <laughs> yeah, is tell it us. too much? Yeah, I can tell you. Okay. Um, so, like, my whole life I've loved older women. Uh-huh. Like, I love a mommy. Okay. Um, or I did. And then I, like, I recently went to Peru. I did ayahuasca. And oh, I had this what? whole... Wait, we got to cere- talk about this at we some We will point. Okay. later. Yeah. I had this whole ceremony that was, like, basically all about my, like, mother wound. Oh. And I woke up the next day and it was just gone. <gasps> Well, so you healed that part of you. Yeah, and I don't feel that, like, weird. I mean, wow. like, I'm still a qu- queer. Like, I like women, but I just, you know, and sure, I would date an older woman, but it's not from that same place. Yeah. So I think that fetishes can come and go, um, and I don't think you they're- You just gotta like, do ayahuasca. Yeah, yeah just do ayahuasca. to go do that. <laughs> no more scat. Yeah, that's- I mean, unless there's partners into it, then yeah. it's fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe they're just, like, shitting Although, on each other's chests. We don't know. It does sound, like, very- Messy. N- not clean. It, it sounds does, like a virus may it happen sound or a bacteria infection. Yeah. But maybe the risk is what makes it fun. True. Mm. The risk can be fun. This kind of risk, though, I don't know. That's what I'll be saying like in my a memoir <laughs> when I talk about getting into that cult. <laughs> <laughs> the risk could be fun. <laughs> and it I'm wasn't. I'm so scared for your cult. Oh, my God. I'm I will update most concerned you guys. about what you're going to make. <laughs> <laughs> what vegan did. Yeah. yeah. Like, what are you going to wear? Are you going to wear like a culty? Oh, I do have my Midsommar outfit from Mimo Night <laughs> if you want to wear it. Yeah. <laughs> could you show up in it? I'm like totally <laughs> With ready. The fla- I have the flower crown still. <laughs> <laughs> I have to pretend I don't know it's a cult. Yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? yeah. I guess. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you just show up so obvious hey guys (laughs) hello bowing yeah Uh, okay all right we gotta move on okay so my little sister she's 14 came up to me and said that she has always had to lick her tampons before she puts them in because she needs them to be wet and that it hurts too bad to do it without licking them is my sister just weird or am i the odd one out because i don't how do we do this are we taking it out of the okay i I do this just so i will tell you you do this. I do this. this is, you lick the tampon applicator? I don't use applicators. Okay. I oh. use like the European kind. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, and it's like, it's really, it's hard to, it's do. Hard to get in they there. To do yes. with these. I don't have nails like I you, know. but it's hard because they're like, it's dry. So yeah, you just got to like suck on it for a second. <sighs> you do this? Yes. Well, you're not fucking with <laughs> no, us. No. You just. You I wish just you waited it? for us to sh- completely annihilate this person and then reveal to us <laughs> well, that you do it. <laughs> here's the thing. I my Honestly, my first reaction was like, if it's not. I don't know if it's hygienic or not. I would assume our mouths oh, yeah. contain a lot of bacteria. So that's what scares me. Okay. But like, why not just get some lube? Or like a l- water I, from the faucet. Okay, so water, oh, yeah, yeah. in my experience, water is like, it dries too quick. It's not like a lubricant. And then <laughs> lube is like too luby, right? Like it'll pop. It'll just like. Okay, so when it's in nope. you. Pop it's, in, pop it's, out. You're saying when it's in you, you're also experiencing that same thing. So you have to get the whole thing wet? Yeah, you just gotta like suck on it so it goes in <laughs> easy. <laughs> I cannot believe this right now. Are you guys serious that you've never done this? No. No. (laughs) Or like spit on it? No. No. Like it's not a dick. (laughs) (laughs) No, I haven't. I I don't. I don't know. The the applic because it's never like dry. It's just like a piece of plastic for me. Yeah, we use like the Americanized probably going to kill us. I'm trolling you. Okay, thank. (laughs) Thank God. Thank God. Did you believe me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't well, I? Well, you did say you were going to join a cult, so like, yeah. I don't know what your vibe is yet. Right. You don't know what shit I'm up and to. And also, it's really not that insane. Right. It's crazy, but it's not like the mini horse crazy. Right. So I was like, okay, that sounds... Uh... So do you? what tampons do you use now? Well, I, I, use, I use applicators. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. I, Woo! Yeah. I just wanted to see if I could um, get you guys to believe me, and it seems like I did. You we did. We're very, very trusting. So yeah. Hence why we wound up in a cult, you know? Oh, yeah. 
Always a callback. Always. <laughs> Have I ruined our chance of being friends now? No. no. Okay, because you appreciate the gag. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great. 10 out of 10. I truly was like, that is so interesting. I honestly wasn't like, that's gross. I was just like, yeah. huh. No, I, I have questions. Th- it does scare me bacteria-wise, I will say. Yeah. I do believe there are it's many fair. things Germs. happening in your mouth. Yes. Like, imagine, imagine if you like chewed like a, a piece lunch. of gum or something. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, like, like a sandwich yeah. and then spitting on your tampon. <laughs> bologna just like and cheese sandwich. Yeah. Just up in my oh, vaginal area, causing who knows what organisms <laughs> replicating. Oh, yeah. I would love to ask a gynecologist their thoughts on this. I also just wish Our I had more guess. information. Yeah. Like, are we just like or is it doing like, that? Whoop. Yeah. I mean, she if she lick. really needs to get them wet, she's probably <laughs> sucking on them. You know? It says yeah. lick. I guess. I don't know. We'll never know. We'll never know unless they update. Or we try it ourselves and see. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, <laughs> well, I do have my period, so I'll go home after this and <laughs> test the go. waters. <laughs> Aaron licked hers. That's why it's stuck up. Yeah. I feed my cat earwax. He likes how it tastes, and I like how his kisses feel. So I scoop earwax out of my ears and let him eat off my fingers. Is it gross? Yes. Is it unethical? Probably. Is it hurting him? No. And we are both happy with this arrangement, <laughs> so I see no issue. Okay, we read something similar to this on our Patreon episode. What was it? It was very similar. It was just like my, or maybe it was like a confessions on Reddit or something. I don't remember. But it was like exactly like this. About feeding your cat earwax? Yeah, it was like I noticed my cat would go to the trash and get my Q-tips out and start eating it. So I started just doing that with my, putting a Q-tip in my ear, getting the wax and feeding it to my cat. And ever since then, I've been so aware of like, if like my kitten, I have a, well, she's like one and a half now, but she will take q-tips out of the thing i'm like no mine too but yeah. i didn't realize that it had anything to do with earwax yeah, i thought I, they just liked the little the, like to play with the that too probably but there is something about earwax that cats are obsessed with do you have think you ever messed tried up? yeah have you ever tried to feed your cat earwax no, no, i have no, no we both have cats yeah i do too oh i didn't know that not to be left out <laughs> <laughs> have either of you fed your cat earwax no no but maybe i should try I will say I have like an adjacent secret that I think is kind of I this one's booger. real. I swear to God. It's not it's not booger. Um <laughs> keep, keep guessing. I don't think you'll guess. Um so I'm nervous to share because I think people are gonna get mad at me, but here we go. Whatever. It's the internet. I don't, yeah. I um I have contacts and when I'm lazy, like I will just throw them on the floor. Like I'm in my room. Like if you ever come to my home, like you will leave with a contact stuck somewhere. (laughs) My cat loves when they first come out and they're like wet and juicy. And I try to remember to throw them out if my cat's in the room, but sometimes I don't. And she just, she just eats it. And it, it it's like a win-win. Like, similarly, it's a win-win because she cleans. She's my room. But can't it, like, yes. clog their little intestines? That, okay, so that's why I didn't want to share. Because I thought people would be like, that's really bad for your well, cat. Well, if it hasn't You're bad happened yet. Like, no, she's thriving. How old is your cat? Like, three. Oh. Yeah, she's, she's probably okay. Yeah. I would just, you know. I, I try to make it mindful. not happen. Yeah. But when it does, I don't know. And it's cute. I love hearing her little, like, <laughs> I'm licking your contact. <laughs> okay. No, she's just fully are chewing you and swallowing. Us again? No, I swear to God. Okay. I swear to God. Yeah. On on like, my cat's life. She loves contacts. Well, it sounds like a cat thing for sure. Yeah. When I was in middle school, I ran a BBW Instagram account, Bath and Body Works. <laughs> no, I literally was like, what's it going to be? I thought it was going to be Big Beautiful Women. <laughs> That's what I thought. I basically posted hand sanitizer and chapstick reviews and some other basic middle school type videos. The day before sixth grade, I posted an outfit of the day video and maybe my feet were in it. But feet in it or not, an account, I forget the name, and I deleted my BBW account so I couldn't find it. I really wish I could. With a white and red profile picture commented something like, people nowadays are insecure about their feet and we're trying to break the stigma. Will you send us a picture of your feet for us to post? My ass got so excited. At this point, I was already out of my first day of sixth grade outfit, but I got back in to, to take the picture for this account. I put my phone across from me and sat in an L position with my feet facing the camera. The soles fully out. Not, not only was my face in it, but I threw up a heart with my hands. <laughs> this is the consequence of my parents giving me unrestricted internet access growing up. My dogs <laughs> being out for free on Instagram for people with children feet fetishes oh slash kinks. Oh it also no. took me until my sophomore year of high school to realize this account was most likely not for people that are insecure about their feet. I mean, Lots look. to unpack here. First being that um, you have Instagram in sixth grade. That's, that blows my mind. That's true. 
triggering. I, I also love that in sixth grade, a BBW account is Bath and Body Works. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and like it's, it's reviews. Cute. I will say reviewing. like that would pop off now. Like if if we had Instagram when like we were in high school, a BBW account would go off. Like the yeah, Trader yeah. Joe's like food reviews yeah. accounts. Like yes. Getting ratings of all the new scents yeah. and all that stuff. I'm sure it exists. Would love. Well, there is that candle lady on YouTube. I, you might know who I'm talking about. Why would she, I specifically know? Because she's not really, she doesn't watch YouTube that much. Me neither. Okay, I only well, watch funny people like <gasps> Alex. Stop it. <laughs> well, I like I am cringe. So sure. <laughs> you like cringe. Cringe is like my favorite. But yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't say she's cringe. She's like kind of cringe. She's this Midwest older lady, like older meaning like probably 40s or 50s, like mid whatever. And her whole thing is going to Bath and Body Works and getting like the new candles and she reviews them. And there's been a lot of viral moments with her where she's like very oh. upset at Bath and Body Works or whatever. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just like very oh funny. God. I don't remember her name, but my mom started watching her and she'd be like, did you see she picked up her neighbor and they went to Bath and Body Works together? And I was like, no, I haven't <laughs> so seen that. She literally is a BBW account. Yes. Yeah. But YouTube. Yeah. Huh. I feel like you may girl. enjoy it. <laughs> Maybe I'll check it out. Send yeah. me the link. Okay. Yeah. I mean, number one rule, no free feet. Yeah. No free feet. No free feet. But also in sixth grade, you don't know what you're doing. Also true. Well, I'm actually curious. I wanted to ask you guys. Yeah. You, you've been on the internet. Pro- I don't know when you started, but have you ever posted anything on the internet that you were like, why did I do that? Um, I'm yeah. sure. Nothing comes to mind specifically. Like my vines. I'm yeah. like cringed out by. Every vine. But nothing that's like detrimental. No. I don't think so. I don't think. Just like our early vlogs, we're like, what were we doing? But they're also just like cute. Yeah. Well, you're young and running around. Yeah. yeah. The first time I ever went to make YouTube videos, I um I I made it like a journal. Like okay. I like got on YouTube and like talked about my my emotions and my like personal life. Yeah. It was very cringe. Um, but then I deleted that and like created A dubs. So <laughs> but like my first version of being on the internet was like very un like uh, all, all information out. Did you delete them or? Yeah, I deleted them. Uh, I was going to say release also, the tapes. Yeah, I, release could, I have tapes I could release. I have, The other thing I will say I'm really embarrassed about. Um, I don't know if you guys knew this then. I um, had a series for a while where I would go on Tinder dates and film them. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All of those videos are privated oh. because I, they make me cringe oh. so hard. Because, like, Why? you make yourself cringe or just the other person or the interaction? I make myself cringe. I think I was just, like, at a weird point in my life where I, like, didn't know who I was. And, like, I was making the show not to actually, like, date people. It was just, like, good content. But I still had, like, very low self-esteem. And I could, like, see it pouring out. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, and then I, that's when I learned that sex sells. And so I, like, the videos became very, like, sex forward. And I just was still kind of a child, even. Yeah. Like, I was, like, 19. Um, so that stuff swiped off the internet. Um, yeah. Yeah. When we're young, it's all a little blurry. What are you doing? Yeah. Which is why I'm happy that like it didn't really exist when I was younger. Younger. Like yeah. in middle school. <laughs> Me too. I would be even iller, I think. <laughs> yeah. If I was on social <laughs> media in middle Ill. school. I'm so sorry for all you young people. It's I can't so imagine. Scary. Start meditating or like yeah. <laughs> do ayahuasca. <laughs> do something. Because it's like, whoo. Yeah. All right. When I was a kid, my dad teased me while I was taking a piss. It was something like, I hear you peeing up there, completely innocent and just poking fun at me. I internalized this and probably a decade later, I am still pee shy. I can't pee in public no matter what, even if I hear people in the other room at my house. My dad used to wake up super early for work around 3 a.m. to smoke and watch the news for hours. I have insomnia and didn't end up sleeping until hours after he left. Sometimes I had to take a leak. I knew he would hear me if I went to the bathroom and the sound would be amplified since we were the only two up. I solved this by pissing in bottles and closing the lid, sometimes leaving it in my room for days. I have destroyed evidence by pouring it down the sink, out the window, putting it in a bag, throwing it in the garbage, and obviously dumping it and flushing it. Many people say a rotting corpse is the worst smell on earth. I say it's marinated, Uh rotten, sour piss that has been cooking like shake and bake, oh, shake and bake, in a water water bottle for weeks. If you can't tell, I am now on many medications. <laughs> Why did he oh let it God. sit for so long? That's a great question. Because you would think, you know, once you're alone, just pour it yeah. on the toilet real fast. That's a, that's like a separate issue. Yeah. You're so right. Yeah. Like, why are you storing it? Yeah. Why are you letting it get to be a dead body smell? How old was this person? Uh, so it's like when they were a kid, I think. When I was a kid. 
I mean, I think it's normal. No, it says a decade later, I'm still pee shy. I think that they're like a scarred for act- life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I understand. I feel like a lot, not a lot, but I've heard of people being pee shy before. Like, oh, other people are in the stalls. Like, I can't pee. Type right. Of vibe. But they're not like peeing in a cup and storing it Hiding, in their closet. Yeah. <laughs> I will say yeah, I was afraid to poop when I was little. Like, I was so scared to poop. Were you doing it in buckets or anything? No, no. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? I have no idea. I was just freaked out by the whole experience and I just tried to avoid it as much as I could. Really? Yes. Well, were, were you always having a stomach ache? Well, I don't remember. I think I was just avoiding it at all costs. And then if I would eventually go but my boyfriend actually when he was young it was a, he did the same thing but he actually had to get Destin. like his poop, surgery his poop removed oh my yeah. god <laughs> yeah wait i'm sorry but when you guys told each other this were you like oh my god sweetie <laughs> yeah it was our first day <laughs> for each other <laughs> for real though like it is kind of an odd thing to have in common i know yeah but i don't know kind of i don't know if it's that rare though i feel like more people than you think are either pee or were poop shy when they were little because it's kind of jarring as a kid. You're like, what is this coming out of me? And it smells. True. I mean, I didn't. Erin, did you experience that? No. So thir- th- we got 33.33333%. Right. Well, I'm the odd man the out. <laughs> yeah. What about the producers? Brandon, pee or poop shy? Um, You know, I used to be pee shy, but. Oh, I feel um, like for men. Yeah. You got to like whip your dick out in front of yeah, everyone. That's, that's yeah, I used to have a very hard time at urinals, actually. Aww. Interestingly enough. But now I'm, I think. Ever since I lived out of my van and like went to campgrounds and like did that whole thing, I think I was just like, yeah, I'm good. Is that nice. awkward? Just like peeing next to guys? I really, I don't understand the concept at all. I don't, so I have never come to terms with it. You know? Okay, that, that was my question. What if it's like it. rooted in our, like, I'm just spitballing here. Yeah. Uh, you know, very homophobic culture. Maybe this was every man, like a, the man's way to see each other's dicks. Because it's so weird. Why do they do that? Like, why no is it idea. just open? I don't, like, Hello? we don't have that. No. So why no. are they doing that? That's such a good... I've never really thought about that. It's so weird. Because you can still put a up a wall agenda. around. Yeah. yeah. Or at least like a divider, at least. Yeah. Maybe they do have them. Sometimes I, I think they, they do. do. Oh, really? I don't know. I think I've... I don't know how so, I would yes, know yes, they that. do. But there was one time I went to like a Detroit Tigers baseball game and there was just this big, massive sink-looking structure in the middle of the bathroom. Stop. And everyone was just pissing openly <gasps> into like the sink structure. I was like, this is wild. <laughs> Someone's yeah. getting an STD somehow. Like, there's no way that nothing bad is happening from that bowl. Ew. I have like a uh, compulsions, like like literally diagnosed since I was younger OCD and I feel like if I was a dude I would not be able to not look at people's dicks like my brain would be like look look look, <laughs> look yeah look. you know no, what I mean yeah. especially I, I feel like a lot of men too are so competitive that they're like yeah what's he packing uh, yeah you know I I'm glad I'm not a man I will just say that I wake up every day and I'm so grateful Thank for that <laughs> uh, me too no offense other me than sir. like you know peeing in a bottle have you guys ever had to pee in a water bottle I think once I was in like, like a Kendall very Jenner. long car ride. I don't know the reference. It's very hard for Kendall women. Is that she... reference? Yeah. Oh, it was just like on an episode recently. Where she peed in a bottle on the way to the Met. A bucket. Oh, she oh, it peed was in a bucket. a bucket. Yeah, it was a bucket. When when did you have to pee in a? Um. Well, along with my hypochondria, I have an f- extreme fear of um, like someone breaking into my home and being murdered. <laughs> and when I was in high school. I would sleep with my bedroom door closed. And sometimes if I like watch something really scary, I'd be too afraid to leave the room and go to the bathroom. So I would pee in like um, vitamin water bottles because, you know, they have like a, a little thicker, bigger, a thicker uh, rim. Yeah. Yeah. But then I would dump them the next day. And I'd it... have to like put a towel down because. <laughs> right. It's, it's hard a as a girl. little challenging. Well, were, did you have shame around it the next day? Were you like, no. what is this? Can yeah, I no, I'd be this? like, why the fuck can't I just walk in the hall? I'd be too scared. I just saw I TikTok about it the other night. It's like what it feels like when you're going to bed and like you turn off the light in your kitchen and then you like run up the stairs because <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're afraid yeah. someone's going to come and get you. Like it's that was like the fear that I had. I feel that. Or I did. I don't know. I don't have it anymore and I live alone. But like I used to be scared of that stuff. Yeah. Like you just sprint. Yeah. yeah. No, I still do that. Me you. too. It's so weird. Really? Because yeah. I'm like, I'll look in a room and I'm like, to turn off a light. And I'm like, okay, no one's here. Then I turn it off and I'm like, ah, someone's here now. now. <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was younger, I would, I would look in like every little corner of my room before I went to bed. Yes. Like you have to check the closet. Yeah. Especially if like TJ's out of town, I'm looking under the bed. <laughs> I'm locking myself in the room. Yeah. I'm sorry. Where? Oh, God. Yep. I heard it. That was yep. so cute. It. It was her accent. <laughs> the rum. Rum. <laughs> rum. Yep. <laughs> Is that like a Massachusetts thing? Like I, I guess. I live in that area. I was raised in that area. Yeah. I don't hear that. I don't know. It's just a you thing. Um, I don't know. 
Hmm. Like, I know, like, my cousin says it, but I never really realized that I did. Hmm. Okay, we're off track. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. Peanut bottles. Sometimes I purposely mute calls and texts for days for my friends to see if they ask what's wrong. <gasps> it's not really for attention per se, but it kind of is. I just overthink a lot and convince myself that they don't actually care. It is my biggest fear to be alone or forever forgotten. My personality is snarky and talkative. I'm afraid that they will get tired of me or will push... Or I will push them away. <laughs> I know it's not a healthy mindset, but sometimes if I do these things to reassure myself every so often, I'm, if I don't do these things, it'll swallow me whole. I First and foremost, I hope this person is seeking, like, therapy. Right. That would be good. This is so toxic. Yeah. We love a toxic And, like, you're queen. so afraid that you're going to push them away, but now you are. Because you if they are. don't reach out to you, are you going to confront them and be mad? And be like, why didn't you reach out to me? And then they're going to be they like, did. I called you. Yeah. <laughs> Like them calling you or texting you is them reaching out. This is so wild to me. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. You know? Yeah, it is, and I, it's obvious. It's such a huge insecurity. It's, yeah. it's sad. Oh, it's so sad. I'm curious sure. since we're this is sort of like our first friend date. Yeah. Do you guys have any toxic friend qualities that I should know about? Um, if we have any, yeah. No. <laughs> we're perfect. Um, we're perfect. I don't know. Nothing that pops toxic. Up. I mean, nothing like that. Yeah. I don't know. I will say, <laughs> I don't do this with friends, actually, but I've done it with significant others before. <laughs> okay. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe I do. Um, where I won't tell them about something happening in my life, like usually something big and bad. <laughs> okay. And then I'm mad at them for not knowing. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, yeah, definitely That's nothing like, like that. Same energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> That's very funny. So, how has that like? How does that conversation go? Um, I just like slowly build up resentment, and then I like tell them about it with like with like almost a hostility. You know what I mean? But they don't know yeah. that for like a month. I was holding on to it. I don't think I've ever actually like said this to someone I've dated. Like I was harboring this or whatever. Yeah. Um. Do you still do it? Well, I haven't been in a relationship in a while, but I don't think that I would. No, yeah. I, I haven't done it in a while. Do you think it's more of a like, you should have known? Kind of. Like, you should have known that I was upset. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And it's you like, should have asked me. You should have been like intuitive enough to like <laughs> send my mind. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> like I, I won't do that to you guys. I That's promise. Okay. I did just remember something. <laughs> okay. I was in a relationship when I was like 19 and I do remember... I don't know why I would do this. I would just like randomly act cold mm -hmm. to him. Um, mainly probably because I was like over it at the time. I would randomly act cold. And then when he wouldn't like respond the same way, I would like get pissed. Like when, when he wasn't trying to win your affection? Yes. Yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. hello. <laughs> but I don't like I have those. I do not have thoughts like that anymore. But yes. in that relationship, for some reason, I don't know if it was our dynamic or what was going on, but. Wow, you just unlocked something I haven't thought about in a really long time. I wonder if you, uh, do you have to sit with it or? Uh, no, I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're over it. it. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm glad we're over our toxic traits. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe I, I can think of something else. Yeah. Then. I'm Go sure home we have stuff that list. we're unaware of. Totally. I'm sure. And that's that's the Maybe that's part. toxic. Let's loop back. Yeah, yeah, like not knowing. In like six months, if we maintain contact and tell each other what's <laughs> wrong with each okay, other. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, cool. Me and my best friend acted like we were in a fight for four weeks just for attention. <laughs> Basically, me and my best friend, who goes to the same school as me, decided not to speak to each other or sit next to each other for a whole day. We were like the kind of best friends who would always be together. You would rarely see us separately. So... We knew everyone would notice, and they did. Everybody asked about it, consulted us, and asked what the fight was about. We just said we didn't want to talk about it. Anyway, the first day passed, and we meet up after school and share our thoughts on the experiment and decide to continue with it since such a dramatic fight, fight. <laughs> fight. Oh. wouldn't have been believable if it lasted less than a day, and since we had no one... And since no one had given any guesses as to why we weren't speaking anymore, this <laughs> carried on for about four weeks until we just showed up at a party together. Needless to say, everyone <laughs> was confused. That's pretty funny. Iconic. It's like very adolescent. Yeah. yeah. But I'm kind of curious about you guys because uh -huh. you're kind of like tied at the hip a bit or like it uh -huh. seems like it at least socially. Yeah. Um, a, have you ever been like, fuck you, I don't want to work with you so closely? No. Oh, no. And B, no. like you've never gotten to a fight where you're like, this can't work. No. No, not personally like that. No, that's good. There's been times like during the pandemic where like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, 
so hard to make videos separately. But you're not, f- so you're not, it's never as a conflict, you two. No, no. And we're like really That's mature beautiful. when we do like feel certain ways about things. Yeah. We're not like, I'm not talking to you. No, but I'm sure if we were like 17, it would be a whole different story or something. Right. But this Absolutely. is really funny. I really like this secret. Just for the fun of it all, they had like a little experiment. I think that's really nice. But it's also so sad because then they just didn't talk to each other for four weeks at school. But I feel like it probably, distance makes the heart grow fonder. That's oh, true. so true. And it then, added the tension. Exactly. You know that they were looking at each other across the room like, like I want to talk to you <laughs> so bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like when you're in a secret relationship. Yeah. Yes. It also do- like doesn't hurt anybody. It's not yeah. a secret that's no, it's hurting like funny. A, a mini horse. But then imagine anything. they like told people at school this. Circle back. They'd be like, what? Like, <laughs> absolutely what's wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's like, why the fuck did you do that? Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Get a hobby. Because like, what? Yeah. Like, what would they say? Like, oh my God, you got us. Like, I- I'm trying to understand. Like, no, yeah. What? I'd be like, why? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. where's the prank? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Very funny. I guess equivalent now, it would be like unfollowing each other on social media and like Ooh. deleting photos together. Have you guys ever thought of um, a fake fight for the clout? We should. Oh, no. I feel now like that, that you ship has passed, it. but that is a good idea. What do you mean? Well, I just feel like we're old now. <laughs> like you're too mature to be having I don't know. public fights. But uh, at the same time, we are on the internet, so I guess it would make sense. Well, if you ever just need a little pick me up, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, maybe. Well, maybe you can, like, now one of us becomes best friends with you. <gasps> oh, yeah. that's a good and setup. That's, you're the issue. Mm. One of us unfollows the other two. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. Do you think anyone would notice? <laughs> I think that we just <laughs> exposed ourselves. Yeah, <laughs> so. I'm curious if we unfollowed each other, if anyone would notice. Should we try? Should yeah. we do it? Yeah, we should. Wait, so now we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. but, but, like, it's not going to work because oh everybody knows. Yeah, but if we do it now before it comes out. Yeah. That's true. We could make this a social experiment until the post date. And then be like, haha, got you all. (laughs) (laughs) Will will you actually do it? Unfollow each other for the next week and then in the comments. It's okay. We follow each other on other accounts. Let us know. I guess. Should we do it right now? Yeah. Yeah, unfollow each other. (laughs) Oh my God. People are going to think it. So yesterday, people are really mad at me right now, Carly. Why? So Carly was over yesterday. Because you didn't give me food? Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. On your vlog, miss? Yes. Oh, no. So Carly, my house is like our office. And so yesterday we recorded something and then I was heat. I had like leftovers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How do I do it? Sorry. I just wanted to show you. Oh, oh, that's so really sad. It's sad. Like follow back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I heated up leftovers for lunch and Carly was like walking around the house the whole like a teenager like I'm so Truly. hungry I'm always hungry at her house I'm so hungry and like doing that the whole time and I was like cutting up the avocado and it was like one portion mm-hmm. and then at one point there was like T- TJ had pre-made this stuff so I wasn't like cooking and I was like oh you can text TJ and see if like he doesn't mind if you eat this one people are so mad I said that they're like if my best friend ever told me to text their partner and I was like okay first of all Carly and TJ have a relationship outside of our relationship yeah. like you guys are in weird like friendships if that's <laughs> weird and so people were very upset and then I did wind up giving Carly half of yeah, it yeah I did end up <laughs> so for those who are pissed I ate half well, I feel like this could be a really great yeah. jumping off point. So That's now, true. I could, yeah. Pretend to be angry. But we're really ruining everything by talking about no, it. No, but it's, it's funny. It'll be it's, done. It's happening And then it will it explain why yeah. we did this. Should I make really vague posts about like <gasps> when your friend doesn't give you food? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're literally doing exactly this. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> fake fight. Well, it's never been we done before. We were just before. like, that's so dumb. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It is so dumb. I said it was iconic. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Okay, speaking of iconic, oh my God, we are about to get on the phone with the following person. Oh and God. I think this is iconic. I just want to start off by saying this is going to sound really bad. I know, great way to start. I will be changing names to keep my privacy and everyone else's privacy. The only other person who knows this secret is my girlfriend. We'll call her Sam. We started dating around a year and a half ago, February 4th, 2021, and decided to move in with each other six months later. Around that time, we went on a cruise together, and on our first night, we were talking and decided to have a polyamorous relationship, but the other people don't know. We would present ourselves as best friends and get with guys to get stuff. The second night of the cruise, she walked in on me having sex with a dude we met 
met, let's call him Jace. She walked in, saw his bare ass, and then walked out. Over the next couple of days, Sam also got with the dude, and they bought us drinks, souvenirs, and other cool things. The crazy part was, neither of us cared. I am a diagnosed psychopath, so I feel <laughs> no guilt or remorse playing guys, and I also have a hard time making human emotional connections. I have never fallen for any dude, and she hasn't either. It's o- been almost a year since it started, and we only have two rules. We don't play with girls. And we put our relationship first. We won't bail on hanging out with each other just to see a dude. And we laugh at their messages and their nudes. Currently, I have two boyfriends. Oh, my God. Five other dudes I'm talking to. She has one boyfriend and around eight dudes she talks to on and off. We've accumulated around $4,000 worth of things from the guys. I know we will grow out of it one day, probably when I stop being a pussy and propose to her. We've talked about stopping and we know that. We know that either of us can stop at any time because we don't care about them. But I think that the secrecy makes it fun. Secretly kissing when no one is looking, still being able to sleep in the same bed and have sex when no one is around, an unsuspecting hand on a thigh under a table at dinner with one, with of, one of her hoes. <laughs> Writing all of this out, maybe we need therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, love you. Oh, yeah. I got questions. Yeah. Hello. Hello. I am here with my friends, Carly and Aaron. I Hi. Hi. And Hello. If that's cool, we're all going to ask you about your secret that you submitted. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we have a lot of questions. It's a kind of crazy secret. Trust me, I know. I live it. Oh, my it God. Is, so y'all are still up yeah. to this? Yeah. <laughs> what if someone <laughs> sees this clip on the internet? That you're dating. You know, I asked to modulate my voice, so I'm hoping that okay. will be enough. Yeah, it is anonymous. <laughs> oh. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, someone oh, yeah. hasn't watched the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I have watched, but not like this far. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else too, trust me. Um, okay, so wait, I have a question about being a diagnosed uh psychopath. Yes. Can you just tell us more? Like, what? how did you know you were a psychopath? What does that mean for you? So, for me, I was diagnosed with ASPD, antisocial personality disorder, when I was 18. They had suspicions growing up, but you're, you can't be di- diagnosed until you're 18. Um, I'll, there are a lot of misconceptions about it. I'm not a violent person or an angry person. I just don't feel as much as a normal person does without ASPD. Do you wish that you did? Because honestly, I wish I felt less. So that sounds really nice. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There are definitely advantages. Like I don't get um, as emotionally involved as some people do. I, I like to say I, I'm very good at like when things go wrong in my life. I can easily have no reaction to it because Mm. i fake it most of the time it's studying people and their body language do you get anxiety (laughs) i don't think so you would know yeah (laughs) what is that like like, "Mm." wow oh what does it make you well can you get what are the negatives are you like are you sad (laughs) about it at all can you be sad yeah, what are the negatives? That's I believe I, I believe I can be sad uh, sometimes. Like when my uh, when my brother passed away, I oh. felt sad. I think. Sorry. Uh, negatives. It's really. I don't like people seeing that, like seeing that I have nothing. So I'm very good at what I call masking. I have mm-hmm. different hats that I put on with different people, and I'm I'm able to change my personality at the snap of a finger. And when those worlds collide, it is a mess. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. God, I, I feel like I could talk to you all day. I've got so many questions. This. Yeah, yeah, just this. Yeah. Wow. Well, but your girlfriend yeah. is, you, isn't, is right? So, like, does she get upset about these things? Um, No, she's not diagnosed with anything. I think she should be because <laughs> I've seen her completely. <laughs> I've seen her completely emotionally detach herself from something, but I've also seen her have real emotions. She, 
obviously there are some things in our relationship that I can't comprehend. Like when she's upset and I don't know why that's a problem. So we communicate really well with each other. Oh, good. That's a plus to it. Neither one of you is ever getting upset about the other person having like deeply personal relationships with others. I guess they're not personal. It's transactional, huh? Yeah, it's it was it's a very strange dynamic, but it has worked well for us in the past year. So <laughs> 4K. I mean it seems like it, yeah. <laughs> do you think it brings you guys closer together? I do, because I feel like you can't appreciate something without feeling what it's like to not have it. Like the only reason we appreciate water is because we've been thirsty. And us coming home to each other at the end of the day, it makes us appreciate each other more because we see what it's like without each other. We see other relationships and we still choose each other every day. Okay, that's profound. That is really profound. (laughs) And it makes sense. Like, have you ever been with other people and you're like, God, I love my partner. Like, or my friend. Just like around. Yeah. Yeah. Or like seeing someone else get treated a certain way by their partner. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, thank God I don't have to deal with this. Just to something else. Yes. Totally. Are you guys both fully gay? Because, like, you've got to enjoy the sex with other people a little bit to endure it. I I would say I'm almost fully gay. I mean, it's a spectrum. Mm-hmm. I would say I'm 90% gay, and I can put up. I, I don't like having sex with them, and I do it as little as possible. <laughs> um, I would say she's around 75%. She had a boyfriend before me, and... She was not happy with a guy at all, and she found girls, and your is so much happier. So, sorry, do your boyfriends ever catch on? Like, you're like, I'm trying to have as little sex as possible. Like, can they not read the room? <laughs> you have two boyfriends, you said, or something, and five um, boys you're dating. Yeah. Like, how do they not eight hoes? Yeah. <laughs> like, eight do they hoes. come over and your girlfriend is there? Like, how? I, I'm so. I have so many questions. It's a big web. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's hard enough with one person. I know. (laughs) So I am in college and I obviously have debt that I need to pay. So we use the excuse that we're broke and we can't afford a two bedroom apartment. So we sleep in the same bed, which is still very nice. Um, Recently, actually yesterday, I found out that two of the guys actually know each other. Uh Uh-oh through a person and that almost blew up in my face oh my god but i fixed it how did you fix it (laughs) um the reason that they know each other is a mutual friend and this mutual friend likes to cause destruction and so i just basically pulled yeah i completely diverted to to them i was like look me and my girlfriend both know we're She's th- she's destructive. She's done this before, and it oh my god! Wait, you, just, you just said me and my girlfriend. They don't know that you guys are dating. Do you mean like girl friend? Or me and me my and friend. my friend? Yeah, yeah it's so friend. funny because I don't think they almost like uncovered the mystery that you were dating both of them. But that's not even the real mystery. The real mystery <laughs> is that you have a girlfriend and you're scamming yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, this sounds yeah, like a documentary so, that would come out. Yeah. In like 10 oh years gosh. on Netflix or something. And it would be so fun to watch. Dude, you should pitch this. <laughs> What's like the I best know. gift I you've think... gotten? Yeah. The best gift I've gotten? Um, I won't say what brand, oh. just in case the person is watching. Oh. But they gave me a $600 bracelet. <gasps> oh my wow. God. After our first date. <gasps> First date? Oh, oh my god. god. Yeah. Where are you finding these boys? <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> Iconic. <laughs> are you guys still talking? Is he your boyfriend? Are you no. forgetting? <laughs> <laughs> I had to think of which one it was. Yeah, but no, I don't. Oh we're not my dating. God. And nobody's found out. Do you have to keep like a journal to keep it all straight? A spreadsheet? Yeah, yeah like. I feel like it would get so... That's a lot of people. And I feel like I I can barely, like, lie to one person without messing up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 
You see, that that's something I'm very good at, though. Okay. I am very good at influencing people. Yeah. And I have them numbered in my phone. I don't even have their names. I just have them numbered. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh, my God. Icon behavior. How? Wait, how, do you... And you just remember... But when you're with them, you have to know their name. One. Like, <laughs> hello, one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But I... If I forget their name, I'll just go with the normal, like, oh, hey, babe, or hey, honey, hey, love, whatever. How long have you known someone and not known their name? Like, have you dated someone for, like, months and been like, wait? Oh, Yeah. There was this dude that I met in one of my math classes at my college. And I, for the life of me, did not remember his name for the first four months. Oh. Until he finally, like, added me on Snapchat. And I'm like, who's this? And he's like, oh, "Oh, this is, I'm in your math. I was like, (laughs) oh. What is the number that, like, the highest number you have in your phone? If everyone's numbered, like, what have you gotten up to? Can I look? Yeah. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. You yeah. do whatever you want. I love it. <laughs> it's actually funny because... Do you have numbers in your phone? What are you looking no, at? No, but I have a bag that says give girls money. Oh! Mm-hmm. You need to give <laughs> this girl that bag. I feel yeah. like you need this bag. <laughs> that is so fitting. <laughs> yeah, give this. girls money. I have 22. Oh, my. That's the highest number. Wow, it's 50. <laughs> 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 That is crazy. <laughs> wow. And I'm not, I do know that it is ethically wrong. Sure. But it is not illegal, and that is what I go off True. of most of the time. It is not illegal. It is not illegal, <laughs> I suppose. What What's the longest relationship you've been in with a dude? Now? Like, your boyfriends. How long have you been dating? Um, There was one that almost made it, I think it was 10 months. Oh, my God. Wow. And they, do you ever ask, like, are they ever like, I want you to meet my mom? Yeah. Like, I want you to be. Oh, yeah, I have. <gasps> oh, my God. You've met the families? <laughs> oh, God. I, his little brother was born and I was in the hospital when he was born and I held him. Oh. <laughs> that <laughs> is. Odd. Odd. It's weird. I don't have any, like, I don't feel bad for the guys. No. And I know I should. I think yeah, it's because they're guys. I yeah. know. That Honestly, is men why. should just be treated this way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably doing much worse, if we're being honest. Yeah, they're, they're probably, probably doing, doing the same you. shit to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, yeah, I always, I've stopped trying to, like, rationalize it when it gets to some point. I used to say, like, oh, it makes them stronger, you know, like, it'll, <laughs> when their next breakup comes, they won't be as hurt or, but. Oh, my God, just, give them a little character. I d- <laughs> yeah, just have a night where you freak yeah. out, like, you're cheating on me. Yeah, like, <laughs> h- how do you, like, end it with them when the time comes? Or you're just like, this isn't working? Um. I do try, I'm not a horrible person. I do try to give them closure. Like I, if they are still in love with me, I'll make them hate me so they won't love me anymore. Mm -hmm. Or I'll be nice and I'll stay friends with them knowing that they'll, that they're able to move on because I have that little bit of humanity. But I usually can come up with an excuse. You only date people who are like actively paying for shit, right? Like you're not going to date someone just to date them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's that would be a waste of like. time. Wow. <laughs> and they all think that your girlfriend is your best friend. Yes. That is so iconic. Have you ever known or like suspected one of the guys was cheating, but like obviously you don't care? Yes. I actually called one of them out and broke up with him because he was cheating <laughs> on me. I love this. <laughs> Were you like... <laughs> crazy did you pretend to be mad like oh yeah i don't know if i can curse but i was like you piece of uh, you're cheating on me how could you i loved you can you make yourself cry yeah oh wow oh dude you there needs to be a a documentary made about no absolutely right crazy i love it (laughs) you said at the end just what are you gonna say no, you go ahead. Well, at the end of your submission, you were like, we probably need therapy. I'm just curious what you think the underlying issue is. 
I don't know because I don't know you, but I feel like, you know, instinct instinctively you probably know. I do. It's a it's a fear of abandonment for me. Mm. I uh it's like I always have a backup plan just in case me and her don't work out, but in my mind she's the person that I want to marry and I am actually planning on proposing <gasps> to her. Oh my god. When? In about three months, when we go on a when we go on a trip. Oh my god! Where are you going? <laughs> We're going to Yucatan. Oh my gosh! So will the other boyfriends be done then, or will it continue? Oh yeah, I kind of hinted hinted at her. I've been like, hey, like maybe we should stop pretty soon. You know, like we're. I'm not going to say my age, but we're we're getting older, you know, maybe it's time to stop this, you know, kind of hinting that like. Did she agree? We're. Yeah, I mean, it's very easy. It's work. It's work for both of us. I mean, the benefits are obviously pretty great. Like, I'm not paying my mortgage right now. But... Oh, my God. What? <laughs> because you're getting money from them or is someone literally paying your mortgage? What do you mean? Somebody is literally paying my mortgage. Oh, I'm, I'm obsessed. What do you mean someone's paying your mortgage? How do you just date someone and get them to pay your mortgage? And yeah, I like, let really us know. can give me a guide. <laughs> <laughs> I just like have no words. I'm just like I, what? I it's I waited. I usually start out small with small little things and I make it their idea to buy me things. <laughs> because if it, if I'm like buy me something, they'll be like, "No, you're insane." So I make it their idea. And for around six months, I was kind of hinting at money struggles. And then one night I broke down and he was like, it's fine. I can pay it. It's fine. I got you. You know, my, you know, my family owns this company. Like I can do it. I got you. And I was like, okay. How much is it? I was just going to ask. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable saying. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. It is, it is a very nice house, if that. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, you said when any... you submitted that it's a total of four thousand, but it sounds like way more than that now. Yeah, I didn't account for that, but because oh. <laughs> that only started very recently. Okay. Oh my okay. God. Well, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This Thank is you. Never leave Incredible. that one. I mean, yeah, you, you know, should stick around probably. Yeah. After the engagement, you might want to <laughs> keep him. Keep that engagement offline. <laughs> Does she know you you're know, doing yeah, this just... podcast? Oh, she does. Oh. <gasps> I... Okay, so... Yes, she does. We need to... <laughs> we need to read her out here. Yeah. Fuck. Um, you, can, you can keep that in. I'll just skip over that when I show it to her. And then just... Are, are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. But what if she watches it on her own? She, or she won't if you tell her not to. She okay. won't if I tell her not to. And... Okay. She lives with me. I I can I can hear. Okay. I can hear things when she's watching. Oh my god! So this is so intense. I'm like, I'm blown away to be honest. Yeah, but also inspired. (laughs) It is kind of inspiring. I mean, get after it. Get that bag. I'm single, so maybe I will. (laughs) But it doesn't matter if you're single. You guys could do it too if your partners didn't mind. Yeah, I just have OnlyFans, so. Kind of the same thing. Do you actually? Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that. Oh my god! I've got back of about secrets. That. <laughs> Just do that once you get engaged. Yeah. Do OnlyFans. Just do OnlyFans. Yeah. I mean, I already have one, but yeah. Oh, oh okay. There you go. There you go. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> those are all my questions. Do you guys have any other questions? Truly at a loss for words. Yeah. yeah. I mean, iconic. I think I think yeah. that's it for me. Yeah. I'm happy for you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm very happy for you. Is there well, anything you. else that you think we didn't we didn't ask about, but that's interesting, like an anecdote or something crazy that's happened? There was at one point where me and her were dating best friends. We were, I was dating one dude and she was dating another one and they were best friends. And they knew that we had previously dated because we faked the whole breakup and they were like, wouldn't it be funny if they were just dating each other behind oh. our backs? Oh. Oh, my God. Did they ever find out? No. <gasps> I think the best, if this is like a movie plot, the best would be if they were also doing the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I guess they don't get anything out of it. You know yeah. I mean? You're not paying for anything. Anyways. Uh, amazing. I love you. Thank you for talking to us. 
Of course. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. Cool. Well, make sure you tell your girlfriend to skip that part. Yep. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) And have a good day. (laughs) Alrighty, you too. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Like, she's so hot. Yeah. (laughs) She was really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. She was very pretty. That is so interesting. Sounds fun. It's crazy because I can't like put myself in her shoes because for me I'd be like oh my god I'd have crippling anxiety how do you keep all of this separate and remember everything but she's just like chilling because she doesn't feel that and imagine like a moment where someone's like really vulnerable to you and lets them know how much you mean to them like I would feel so bad I know, I know. but you she, she can probably mimic doesn't it. I know she's a psychopath which is di- I mean diagnosed which is so I hate to use the word crazy but like it's so out there well, we just don't, we don't know what it's like yeah. and I feel like it shouldn't be so stigmatized because it's like obviously people I don't know I yeah, think no, it's I'm so like, interesting so like Ted Bundy or <laughs> are that's we why I'm actually... not helping the stigma though because we just told this like un- like this crazy story <laughs> about her like yeah. financially abusing men I don't know men. I don't know well we're she's just here technically not doing anything illegal like she right. said right she's just also like I feel like it's all men yeah, if she was doing this to women, it would be way worse. And I'd be like, don't yeah. do that. I agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and you know what? They'll live and they'll learn. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it did make me nervous, though, when she said that they were this close to realizing, like, the two people who had a mutual friend. Yeah. I still don't understand how, like, not more of a conversation would have happened. I know. You know? I, I know. I need to, like, watch a reality show of this because I'm like... How are these interactions happening and how are they not catching on that you're not into them? And where are you going? And how, I, I just don't get it. No, this would like really make an amazing piece of content. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like a, a documentary. Yeah. Yes. Or a, like a Lifetime show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a Shane Dawson series. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Also, as someone who has like crippling confrontation anxiety, like Me it too. must be so awesome just knowing that you won't feel that. Yeah. Like even if they did confront her, you'd just like be like, well. Dude, oh, yeah, I did. Well, whatever. Feeling? So much yeah, sucks. I know. Yeah. I would much rather not feel anything. I know. I'm a cancer too, so I have mm, it like Scorpio. Mm. Water is feeling it. Constantly and also crying. cancers are like the most emotional yep. sign, right? Yeah. <laughs> what are you? Aries? I don't know anything about me that. Neither. <laughs> it means nothing to me, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> me neither. The only thing about cancers, I'm like, I know we're emotional. Yeah, we cry. <laughs> okay, well, speaking of crying. Our yeah, last segment is called Round of Applause. Oh. We do something, we talk about something that we do to feel better, like oh. s- something that's sl- slowing down, presence. So what what do you two get up to when you're feeling down? Hmm. Like Scroll sad. TikTok. <laughs> Surely that won't help. <laughs> no, it actually does. <laughs> it can't, I feel like it does, like it gives me a high and I'm giggling, but when you turn it yeah. off, like you're in the same place. You're not place. any better. Yeah. I mean, mm. I will say I started doing Pilates like mm. eight months ago or something. Yes. and it's almost like meditating because you have to be so concentrated on what you're doing yep. that you can't really be thinking about anything else. And it's like an hour long. So it's, I love it. And that I feel like sense. that helps. Yeah. I also, am, I'm on Prozac now. So <laughs> that helps too. <laughs> Pilates and Prozac. Yeah. The two P's. Erin? <laughs> um, yeah. If I'm feeling, I'm like a full binger. I got to sit down on the couch, especially right now, like turn on the fire, get real cozy in my zone. And then I put on like, a toxic TV show like The Real Housewives See, or something. Again, like, I don't know if that's helping. I know. <laughs> it feels like in the moment, for right. sure. I, I agree. Also, I shouldn't, like, I'm yucking your yum. It's well, okay. I think mindless things help a little bit. Yeah. I guess maybe not, like, long term. Especially when yeah. you see, like, I'm watching The Real Housewives. I see, of course, it's supposed to be, like, the glitz and the glam, but their lives are worse than mine. Mm. So, you know, it's like I get, I'm like, yeah. okay, well, I, I could be almost going to jail. I think that's why some people like this podcast. <laughs> like, a lot of the comments are <laughs> like, like thank God than I'm yeah. doing fine. So, I guess we're friends now. I guess Besties. so. Love it. I love it, too. What are we going to do after? <laughs> I don't know. Let's discuss it. I also <laughs> want to hear about your OnlyFans. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Check out Carly and Erin on YouTube. Only Friends podcast. Good Influences podcast. Yes. Don't forget to review Revealing Your Secrets wherever you listen to podcasts. Remember, you're only as sick as your secrets, so send them to me. Go to speakpipe.com slash revealing your secrets to leave a voicemail or fill out the anonymous submission form at the bottom of my show notes. Today's episode of Revealing Your Secrets is a production by Cast Media. I'm your host, Alex Weiss. My producer is Eddie Montalvo. My associate producer is Brendan Klein. My executive producers are Colin Thompson and Harris Lane. My editor is Bobby Semmelsberger. My technical engineer is Dustin Park and design and animations by Jeff Schweikart. I will see you next time. Bye.